Okay guys, I want to give a quick update on the OmniTurn control and uh, the work that I've done to it so far. Um, if you recall, the goal really was to do a little bit of updating, put an 8-inch LCD monitor in it. Um, I sourced a VGA card, 16-bit uh, ISA, also sourced uh, an I.O. Uh, floppy IDE controller that would work with the DOM solid-state drive. Um, those are installed now, and um, now dealing with uh, replacing the old membrane keyboard with a regular uh, PS2 keyboard. Uh, let me show you that and uh, how I plan to attack it really quick. Okay, the old membrane keyboard resided right here, and what I did is so I wanted to blank off the space, so I made this, I got a piece of aluminum, and I made this plate that'll bolt in place of the membrane keyboard here. Um, I'll put it behind there and we'll bolt it in. And then um, I got a little rubber grommet that will protect the keyboard cable here. The keyboard cable will pass through to get it to the inside of the cabinet and then it'll go through the grommet and it'll kind of lock in there. Um, it's a standard PS2 keyboard. As I previously mentioned, it's an inland keyboard. Uses a standard PS2 connector, and what we have is a PS2 to AT uh, adapter cable. Since this motherboard's a 386 motherboard, it still uses the older 5-pin AT-style keyboard. So I had to convert from that to the PS2, and that's what this does. So let me get that plugged back in. Get that in there. It's the old uh, monochrome connector for the old CRT monitor. I just tucked it back in there. Um, so let me go ahead and get the plate installed and then we'll figure out um, how to secure the keyboard. I'm kind of thinking of just using um, maybe some Velcro, some industrial Velcro, see how that works. There we go. And you can see that, got the grommet in there and the slot was for the cable. And uh, it passes through there nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the keyboard to the PS2 adapter kind of get it tucked back there and we're going to need to get this control panel loose from the chassis get the plate in there I use the old membrane keyboard as a template to drill and tap these uh, holes in this aluminum plate. Just didn't want to pinch my grommet. Have to get some more chassis screws because some of them were missing. Okay, so you kind of get the idea. 
how that's going to go. And like I said, I'm on these pads here. These are going up against the aluminum plate. Um, thinking about just using some industrial Velcro to hold it on there, and that'll take care of that. So that's pretty much the keyboard. Okay, I've got it attached. You can probably hear it. I used uh, some industrial strength Velcro strips on either side of it. And it's holding on there pretty well, so I think that should work out good. Okay, let's look at the GoTech USB uh, floppy emulator. Um, I put this in in place of the B drive. There was two floppies in this machine previously. Originally it came with an A and a B. The A drive was a boot drive and loaded the software for the Omniturn. And then the B drive had the uh, user uh, programs. So now we've got a USB stick um, that a user can just load his programs onto it and bring it over here and plug it into the machine. The A drive is no longer necessary. Um, but it's there in case it needs to be booted to or you got to load stuff to the solid state drive it now boots that solid state drive um, but anyway this GoTech floppy drive emulator um, basically takes a USB stick and it actually came with this one 128 megabyte USB stick um, it as I mentioned goes in place of the old 1.44 floppy and when you have 128 megabytes what it does is it'll with the software and don't use the software that comes with this drive. Link in the description below of a gentleman on YouTube who uh, demonstrated installing one of these and a source for better software. The source uh, uh, for the better software will partition this USB memory stick into, I think in this case, 85 1.44 megabyte partitions. And then you can store in each one of those partitions um, your software. Um, you might just leave it as um, you know one partition, the 1.44 megabyte, and that's the limitation of your program size, which is still pretty good size. But uh, anyway, so again, it basically the software on, the, on your Windows PC will partition this drive and format the USB stick so that the GoTech can look at it. And then um, let me let me power it up for you and I'll demonstrate. I've got a fan to take care of here. But anyway, you'll see the GoTech, there's two buttons over here on the side and if you power this up while holding those buttons and USB stick in there, it will partition this, this, this USB drive. Again, I don't recommend that. Use the, uh, use the software that, uh, again, you'll find the link in the description below. But anyway, so say there's 85 little partitions, 1.44 meg partitions on here. They look like folders on your on your Windows computer. So to access them, here's zero. You access them, the button on the right is one at a time. So this is, uh, let's just call it folder one, two, three, four, et cetera. And if you have more than that, once you get to nine, you go this one, there's 10, 11, 12, 13. So the button on the left increments the 10. So, you know, again, that's so you can access them and the computer will recognize it that way. It'll look at that partition number. So you need to know where your program's at in your folder number, I should say. Um, again, you may just leave it on partition zero and use that to move back and forth. Or, you know, if you know your folders and you know what programs are on them, um, again, you're just basically transferring them, the programs, your, your uh, G-code programs from, say, a Windows PC or whatever into the Omniturn. You probably just stick it on your folder zero and then read from it, put it on the solid state drive, and there you go. Um, very, it was a very easy install. All right, we're going to take a second to go over this Omniturn control that I refurbished. Um, I put in an LCD monitor, got rid of the CRT. Um, I put in a uh, disk on module, which is a solid state drive. Um, I put in a GoTech USB uh, floppy emulator, so you can put in uh, your programs via USB stick. Uh, replace the floppy drive, replace the um, power supply in the computer as well to make sure it's uh, uh, fully functional for quite a while. 
Um, and that's pretty much about it, just kind of giving it the once over, cleaning it and so forth. It is a used machine. It's, it's uh, quite old, I guess, as Omni turns go, but with the uh, upgrades, I think it modernized it a little bit. Um, I'm not completely familiar with the Omni turn control, but it is pretty, pretty simple to uh, operate. So I want to take a minute to go over the functions and then we'll do a walk around or I'll show you the inside of the cabinet. All right, so let's get started. Uh, first thing uh, we're going to do is fire up the control. And the it will come with it. It's the control. I'll also put a new keyboard on it because the membrane keyboard on it was bad. Um, uh, it comes with a control, it comes with both servo motors. Um, it appears that one motor and one of the drives has been replaced at some time because it looks newer than the other one. Um, and it will come with the encoder as well. Um, and that's, that's all it comes with the unit. Okay, here it's booted up. Uh, and it's asking if we want to back up the uh, program files. We're going to say no. And there it's booting. I'm going to run you down a little bit so you can see a little bit better, perhaps. Okay, hopefully you can see well. All right, um, we'll do the jog function first. We, oh, we need to enable the servos first. So the servos are enabled. Now we hit, we can J for jog and we'll hit number three for a fast jog and there's the z minus there's z plus again z minus z plus here's x plus and here's x minus again x plus x minus Z plus, Z minus, okay? So uh, now what we want to do is we want to go home. So I'm going to press H. This is press X to home Z. So I'm going to press X and then Z to home Z. All right, and then we're going to hit number nine, establish home. So it, it homes to reference marks. There are no limit switches on an Omni turn. And press cycle start. There it's finding its uh, reference marks in the encoders. All right, so now that it's homed. All right, so go back to the main menu. We're gonna go into automatic. And um, let's look at the directory. It says F4 for directory. And we'll just choose 004. We're gonna go 004 and enter. All right, and it's ready for cycle start. Now, obviously the encoder has to be running because it's, it's gonna wanna see, it's gonna wanna see a spindle rotation before the motors will turn. So I'm just gonna use this little cordless drill here to rotate the, uh, the encoder. So we're gonna hit start. There you see the Z-axis moving. There's the X-axis. I'll let it run just a little bit more. You can see the position on the uh, control here. All right, so that pretty much shows you that the control is, is working. Let's, uh, let me pull the cover off and let you take a look inside the, the control. Mm -hmm. 
a shot of the spindle motor, or the uh, spindle encoder that is, sorry. And then the uh, servo, there's our DC brush servos. Here's the front panel of the Omniturn. And then here you can see, uh, this is an Omniturn drive. I think Glentech made these for Omniturn. And this is an uh, advanced uh, motion control uh, servo brush drive. There you can see the LCD monitor. Switches are all original. I replaced a couple of bulbs. There's the uh, board. And then on this, the uh, computer is resides in here. And we'll take you around back. There's the uh, the GoTech USB floppy drive emulator, and then uh, the new floppy drive. Um, it has a serial port if it's needed. Um, I have no way to test it, but all I can do is assume is it works. It is plugged into the computer. And that's about it.